maintain and expand your store's current customer base. Providing a great tasting product is not enough. In fact, it's only the beginning. Customer base is never guaranteed. People who walk through your doors today may not come back tomorrow or next week or next month. There's even the chance they might never come back at all. Studies have revealed a variety of reasons for this phenomenon. Poor customer service tops the list. Even subway stores have this problem. For example, in 1992, poor service topped our customer complaint list every quarter. By year's end, this area alone accounted for over 37% of the complaints registered with headquarters. In order to succeed in the fast food industry, both your products and customer service must be top-notch. You've got to give every customer a positive experience, so each one will want to visit your Subway store again and again. In this training tape, we're going to show you how to do this by using basic customer service techniques. The material is presented slowly to enhance understanding. You'll work much quicker in the actual store setting. Let's take a look at the first area. Excellent service involves how you act toward customers. Not only must you fill their order, but you must also make them feel welcome. Let them know you appreciate their business. This is a task that involves several elements. Let's start by looking at these. Customers have two needs, practical and emotional. Filling their practical needs is easy. Make their order as specified. But what if you were rude during their visit, or acted indifferent? Then the customer got what he ordered, a sandwich, but he didn't get what he wanted. Friendly, quick, trouble-free service. Filling emotional needs is a major part of customer service. In fact, even if you can't fill an order exactly, your customers can still leave happy, as long as you treat them pleasantly and with respect, just as you would treat friends. Make eye contact and greet people when they enter your store to make them feel welcome. Hi, welcome to Subway. I'll be with you in a minute. It only takes seven seconds for customers to get irritated for waiting unnoticed. At least acknowledge their presence with a few words to let them know you know they're waiting. When you're ready, turn to the customer and give him your undivided attention. Thanks for waiting. What can I make for you today? Something else just happened here. Something so simple you might not have thought about it. Hand washing. It's easy to forget, but it's one of the most important tasks you need to perform. Let's take a moment to find out why. Plain and simple, hand washing looks good to customers and gives them the idea that cleanliness is important. It also promotes proper hygiene. Hand washing helps prevent the transmission of bacteria to food and lowers the occurrence of foodborne illness. When you're a customer, how do you feel when you see counter attendants wash their hands? How about when they don't? The hand sink in your Subway store is located on the back counter. This positioning allows customers to see when you wash up and when you don't. Rinsing isn't good enough. Always work the soap to a lather, rinse thoroughly, and dry. Now you're ready to make a sandwich. When must hands be washed? Before touching food, after using the restroom, after touching your hair, face, or skin, after handling money, and in between preparing different food products. For example, if you've just made meat setups, you should wash your hands before preparing vegetables for slicing. The use of rubber gloves is a topic that frequently arises during any discussion on hand washing. Some of our store owners have their employees wear gloves. If gloves are worn, you must also follow a few sanitary rules. When you wear gloves, your fingers stay clean inside, but the outer surface becomes dirty. A dirty glove can contaminate food just as easily as dirty hands. To prevent this from happening, you must change them after handling money, after touching hair, face, or skin, 
and in between preparing different food products like meat and vegetables. Now, let's get back to more ways of treating customers like friends. There are a few more things to keep in mind. Thanks for waiting. What can I make for you today? Continue making eye contact as you take orders. This shows you're paying attention and makes customers feel special. That we don't like. Refer to customers by name if you know it and make pleasant conversation with them. Talk about the weather, sports, family, anything appropriate. It puts them at ease and sets us apart from the competition. It also helps keep customers occupied so the time spent waiting in the store seems short. And above all, smile, be friendly and quick, and act professional at all times. Remember, you're not just selling sandwiches, you're also selling your store's image. Putting customers at ease doesn't end as you get down to business. In fact, being friendly can help you take customers through Subway's ordering procedure in a fast and efficient manner. A typical transaction can be broken down into four main parts. Let's cover them in the order you would encounter them while working. I've never been here before. What do you recommend? What's in a Subway Club? How far in advance do I have to order a six-foot sub? I'm having a get-together on Sunday. Can I order 20 sandwiches to pick up then? Every day, customers will ask you all kinds of questions about Subway's products as they order. Helping customers understand how and what to order is a major part of giving excellent service. Learn everything about the product line and the particular ordering procedures in your store. I've never been here before. What do you recommend? You might want to try our BMT. It's made with salami, bologna, pepperoni, and ham. Our seafood and crab is another popular choice. What's in a Subway Club? Our club is made with turkey, roast beef, and ham. How far in advance do I have to order a six-foot sub? We'd like a day's notice so we can braid the bread and prepare everything we'll need. We make every party sub to order so it's as fresh as possible. Would you like to order one? I'm having a get-together on Sunday. Can I order 20 sandwiches to pick up then? You sure can, but you might want to consider one of our party items. Our six-foot party sub serves 20 to 25 people. Or you might want to consider a party platter. Here's our brochure. Always try to give sincere, accurate information to customers. If you're asked a question you can't answer, ask the manager for help. Or if you're alone, offer to write down the customer's name and phone number, and then call back when you find out the answer. After a customer places an order, you have to try to increase their check size through suggestive selling. This, too, is a learned technique. To put it plainly, timing is everything. When done correctly, suggestive selling enhances your menu and encourages customers to buy higher priced or additional items. It should never confuse them, or worse, annoy them. Common sense will tell you how to do it right. We'll even prove it. Here are the three times when you can trade up customers during a transaction. When should the following questions be asked? How about a BMT today? This can trade up a customer to a higher priced sandwich. Since it offers customers a choice of sandwich, you ask it when you take their order. That's a foot long, right? You need to know what size sandwich to make, and the larger the better. Ask this if no preference is given with an order. Would you like to try double meat today? Since you're suggesting extra meats, this one's appropriate to ask while you're making the sandwich. Remember to explain the higher cost involved so there's no confusion later on. Now what size drink would you like today? This question involves an additional item, so you should ask it when you're done making the sandwich. Don't ask if the customer wants a drink. Ask what size he wants. This is more likely to encourage a drink purchase. Would you like a fresh baked cookie and a bag of chips with that? Immediately follow your drink question with this. Again, chips and desserts are additional items. Ask about them after you've wrapped the sandwich. How well did you do on the quiz? See, we told you it was easy. Let's move on to the next part of a transaction, handling the sub club card. 
The Sub Club card is a marketing tool unique to Subway. Basically, it rewards loyal customers and encourages repeat visits. The Sub Club card is one of the best in-store marketing tools available. The card receives two stamps for a foot-long sale and one for a six-inch. Customers can redeem full cards, those bearing 24 stamps, for any regular foot-long. Half-full cards can be redeemed for any regular six-inch or salad. Most of your regular customers should be familiar with the Sub Club card, but new ones may be confused. After all, how often does someone get something for free? Offering a stamp for someone's card is the last question to ask before ringing up an order. This gives you the time you'd need to explain the program to a new customer without interrupting the flow of the transaction. The last part of the business side involves how you handle customers as they pay for their orders. It's easy to feel rushed during this part of a transaction. Customers are waiting, you're trying to hurry. But it's important you do this right. The customer deserves to be given the correct change. And that's a seafood footlong, a cookie. That's 654, please. Here are three steps that can help you get it right every time. First, repeat the amount given. Out of 20. Next, place the customer's money on top of the register or on the register drawer. This leaves no doubt about how much the customer actually gave you. And lastly, count back the change. Okay, that's 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10 is 20. Thank you. Let's watch that again. Notice how the change wasn't counted back to the customer as $13.46. Instead, it was counted back to equal the customer's original method of payment, a $20 bill. Okay, that's 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10 is 20. Thank you. This three-step method of counting back change verifies the accuracy of the change and reconfirms the amount you took in from the customer. Although it's tempting just to give back what the register tells you to, it's good cash register etiquette and good business to take your time to do it the right way. Don't trust the machine. If you've entered a wrong amount, it will calculate the wrong amount of change. Another tip for preventing errors is to keep your money drawer neat. Place all bills face up with the heads pointing in the same direction. This can help you detect when you've placed a bill in the wrong slot. Let's see how the four parts of a transaction fit together. As you'll see, an effective employee mixes making friends while conducting business. Hi, welcome to Subway. What can I make for you today? I've never been here before, but uh, how's that spicy Italian? Well, that's a good sandwich. That's made with salami and pepperoni. Another good choice is our Subway Club. That has turkey, roast beef, and ham. It's one of our most popular sandwiches. That sounds good. I think I'll try it. Would you like that on white or wheat bread? I think I'll have wheat. Okay. That's a foot long, right? My choices are six inch and foot long? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll go for the foot long. Would you like double meat or bacon on your sub today? No bacon, but is everything double with double meat? Well, you get the normal amount of fixins, but twice the meat and cheese of a regular footlong for just $2 more. I'm hungry today. I think I'll try that. Okay, great. And is that going to be with all our fixins today? The fixins are what's up on the menu, right? Yep, that's them. It's easiest if you tell me what you don't want on a sandwich. Okay. I'll have everything except for olives. Okay, no olives? No problem. Sure turned into a nice day out there. Yeah, it's a lot warmer out there than they predicted. It's great weather to play softball. You play softball? What team are you on? I play on my company's team, Acme International. Really good friend of mine plays on that team. His name's Martin. I think he's a pitcher. Yeah, he is. He is. He's been doing a great job this year. Really? He keeps trying to get me out for a game, but never seem to make it. Yeah, we have a good time out there. Yeah, softball's a lot of fun. So, it's quite a sandwich. Yeah. Okay, what size drink would you like today? 
I think I'll have a large. Okay. Okay. Would you like a bag of chips or a cookie to go with that? No, thanks. I think the double meat will be enough. Okay. Here's a subclub card. What's this? That is our discount card. Every time you buy a six-inch or a salad, we give you one stamp. Every time you buy a foot-long, we give you two. When you fill up the card, you get a free sandwich. Wow, a free sandwich. I'm going to hang on to this. Okay, so that was a double meat club and a large soda. That comes to $7.93. Out of ten? Okay, that's eight, nine, and ten. Here's your receipt. Here's your cup. Okay. The self-service down that way. Thank you. Have a nice day and come back soon. Well. There you have it. An example of excellent basic customer service. The employee was patient and friendly with the customer while moving the ordering process along. Every customer deserves this high level of basic service. However, this does not mean it's the best that can be done. Your store owner and manager will have more instruction for you in all of these areas. Be sure to learn the particular rules for your store so that you can provide quick, professional, and above all, consistent service for all of your customers. You never know who's going to call your store. It could be a secretary ordering lunch for the office, someone who wants a BMT to go, or someone who's interested in party items. Or maybe it's even Subway's founder, Fred DeLuca, asking how things are going. Then again, maybe not. The point is, it really doesn't matter if you can't see who's on the other end of the line. Callers are customers, and they deserve the same excellent service as those who order in person. Since they can't see you, you've got to impress them using only your voice. Here's an example of how you can make that first impression a good one. No one likes waiting. Make sure you answer calls in three rings. Also, remember to speak clearly and slowly enough to be understood. Let the caller hear the smile in your voice. Good morning. Thank you for calling Main Street Subway. This is Jim. May I help you? Hi, this is Paula calling from Harrington Press. I'd like to place an order for a party platter for this afternoon. Great. What type of sandwich would you like, Paula? BMTs, tuna, and roast beef. Is that possible? That's no problem. That platter, including tax, comes to $30.73. Would you like drinks and chips with that? No, we have plenty of those. But do the sandwiches on the platter come with all of the fixins? Yes, they do. Now, what time would you like to pick this up? Four. I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? Four o'clock. Is that okay? That's no problem. One party platter for Harrington Press will be ready and waiting for you at four o'clock. Now, all I need is your phone number. 555-1212. That's 555-1212? That's right. Okay, Paula, thanks for your order. Now, do you know how to get to Main Street Subway? Across from the hospital, right? That's right. We'll see you in a little while. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. But proper phone etiquette doesn't stop there. In addition to the points we just covered, there are a few more we'd like to review. Be sure to keep all of these points in mind as you serve customers who order by phone. Be able to tell customers how to get to your store. Don't interrupt customers when they're speaking. And ask permission before putting a caller on hold. Customers all seem so nice, don't they? You're friendly and talking and joking while giving someone excellent customer service. Then, suddenly, you're faced with an outburst of hostility. It doesn't matter if it's your fault or not. You're behind the counter, and you have to handle it. Customers complain for a variety of reasons. It could be anything. Their sandwich wasn't made right, an offer was unclear, you didn't wash your hands, anything. The best strategy, of course, is to try to prevent this from happening. Most complaints are prompted by poor communication. The techniques covered in this tape can help you improve your communication skills. But when you mix a customer having a bad day with even the slightest mistake, well, I think you get the picture. Where's the manager? I'd like to see the manager. 
At first, dealing with a customer complaint may seem like an impossible situation to handle. This is not the sub I ordered. You've got to somehow make an unhappy customer happy again. I ordered a tuna, no onions, and look what I got. It's covered with them. Your manager will explain your store's policy on how to handle customer complaints, but here are some general guidelines. Take the complaint seriously. It may seem trivial to you, but it's important enough to the customer to justify a complaint. Listen and hear the person out before saying anything. Interrupting only makes things worse. Never argue or make excuses. Restate the problem to make certain you understand it. Be objective. Your job is not to point the finger of blame. You're investigating facts and finding a solution. I want something done about it. Okay, let me just get this straight. You ordered a foot-long tuna with no onions, and someone put onions on it, is that right? That's right. I got this sub this morning. I can't eat it. Empathize with the customer and show you understand how he feels. Statements like, I can understand why this situation has upset you, show your concern. Also, find out what the customer wants. A new sandwich? A discount? A refund? Then, resolve the problem or make a sincere commitment to avoid repeating it. Lastly, thank the customer for his comments. After all, when customers don't complain, they don't give you the chance to make things better. I can see why you're upset. But how about if I make you a new sandwich? It'll only take a minute. That'd be fine. Tuna, no onions this time. Coming right up. You know, I usually don't complain about such small things, but I really can't stand onions. I understand. I'm just glad you gave us a second chance. We wouldn't want to lose you as a customer. Well, just be sure you tell the manager about this morning. I don't want it to happen again. Oh, and neither do we. But I'll tell you what. How about a free drink for your inconvenience? Okay, thanks. Remember, Customers are your number one priority. They may not always be right, but they deserve to be treated courteously in every situation. And don't let one bad encounter affect the rest of your day. We've covered a lot of ground in this video. As you can tell, excellent service isn't hard, but you must always be aware of how you treat customers. To show you why, we're going to wrap things up by letting you listen in on customers' thoughts you'll see two Subway stores. Keep in mind the simple question, which one would you want to visit again? <laughs> that, that was my most favorite concert of all time. That music was so loud I could feel it. No wonder the radio's so loud, he's probably deaf. No, you missed the great show, even though our seats were so hot. Does he even know I'm here? So what are you doing on Saturday night? I've got to get back to work soon. Excuse me. Really? Excuse me. Uh, I gotta go. Uh, I'll call you back later. Finally. Hi, what can I get you? Hi, uh, what do you recommend? I'm in the mood for something light today. Uh, how about a salad? Salad, okay. What kinds are good? Oh, okay. Depends what you like. No kidding. Okay, I'll just have a six inch cold cut combo, please. No peppers or olives. Read or white? White. Double meat or regular? Regular. Did you say uh, six inch or foot? Six inch. I think I already said this. If you don't want double meat, it'll taste better. I'm sure. I'm not that hungry. Besides, it probably costs a lot. I'm glad that's not me falling. Hey, Kelly, can you get that? I'm with the customer. There's someone else back there? Gee, did you put enough lettuce on that? I wonder if his hands are clean. I didn't even see him wash them earlier. He's in the pepper salad, right? 
place. Hey, he remembered something. The office there? No, I don't want to buy a fur. Ah, why don't I have a medium drink, please? Here's your cup, and the stuff is right over there. Okay. That's 273. Have a good day, and uh, thank you for coming to Subway. Thanks. Oh, uh, hey, give a sub sub card. I could stamp. Well, maybe next time. excellent service for Subway's customers. Your store owner or manager will give you additional instructions on the specific rules of your store. Just remember, whenever you serve customers, imagine you can trade places with them. Then, act as you would like to be treated. <laughs>